for this talk at Clive Aiken in Basel. Today's speaker is Sean Ramlux. Um, she will soon finish her master in law at the University of Bern. And with her legal expertise, she has advised both sentence politics and Gelius Schweiz. And today she will talk about the ethics of credentials. Thank you very much. Welcome you all to today's talk about ethical career choice. Um, the main question we want to answer is how can you make a difference? Um, now, uh, for those who did not yet fill out the uh, evalu evaluation I gave you, please do that now. So, how can we make a difference? Uh, there are a lot of problems in this world. Uh, we can involve ourselves in causes like uh, animal welfare, climate change, world poverty, gender equality, uh, anti-discrimination and so forth. And uh, the questions we are about uh, to answer today are how can we use our 80,000 hours to work on the most pressing problems in this world? And here the crucial question is, what does it mean to make a difference? Well, first, where can we make a difference? We are living in a globalized world. We can make a difference everywhere. So what do I mean by that? Uh, to explain this, I would like to go uh, through a little experiment with all of you. It's called the uh, drowning child. So imagine, imagine every day when you go to work, you come by this park. And in this park, there's a little pond and one morning you realize there is a child in that pond. And then you go closer and then you see this child is crying for help. So uh, if you, you're the only person there, if you don't walk in, the child will die. So to save the child, uh, there will be no dangers for you. However, your clothes will get wet and you will be late for work. So who of you thinks there is a moral obligation to save the child? Please raise your hands now. Very good. There's also a legal obligation to save the child. If you won't do it, you might end up in prison. So uh, let me go on to the next example. There are 10 other people in the park who could also go and save the child. Does this change, some, change something um, in your moral obligation to save the child? Uh, who thinks no? Please raise your hands. Thank you very much. Now, uh, in the next example, uh, you've just been shoe shopping and uh, you really love those shoes, they cost you 500 francs, uh, you really, you really have, they have an emotional value to you, and there is no time uh, to take them off, so you have to walk into the pond and save the child, and your shoes will get ruined. So does this change something about your moral obligation to save that child's life? Who thinks there is a change? So we all agree, that's good. Um, the next example, the child is a victim of heavy floods. It's waiting on the rooftop of its house. The water is rising more and more. If there is no help, it will drown at some point. So you are there, you, you can see the house, it's somewhere in the distance, okay? And there is a helicopter but in order to make that helicopter start, you, you need to fund the flight. And it costs 500 uh, francs and dollars. 
and you don't need those 500 francs right now, you have them to your disposal. So who of you thinks there is a moral obligation to give those 500 francs and to save the child's life? Please raise your hands now. Okay, I see we almost all agree. So in the next case, the last case, um, it's the same scenario. Uh, there has been a flood, it's an emergency, but uh, something is different about the situation. You're sitting at home on your couch and you see this on the news. Okay, you're not there, you don't see the house in front of you. And there is not only that child, there are many people waiting on their rooftops and they want to get saved. So for every 500 francs being donated, uh, there is a flight who can start to save one person. So who of you thinks there is a moral obligation to donate 500 francs to save one of those lives? Is there, is there any change to the examples before? Um, if you think there is a moral obligation, please raise your hands now. Okay, so uh, the things I did with you right now is I, ex I explained to you uh, expanding the circle of compassion. And um, so first we had no danger for you, no big cost for you in order to save life. Uh, second, we all agree that even if there are other people around, you still have this moral obligation to save someone's life. Then uh, you had to um, give up your shoes of 500 francs because you thought this is more valuable, uh, the child's life is more valuable than your shoes. In the next example, uh, it's still an immediate emergency because you're there, you see it, okay? And you can enable um, a flight that will save the child's life. And then uh, something changes. You're not there. It's not an immediate emergency. You're not close, but the emergency is still there. So is this immediacy of an emergency really relevant uh, to make a moral obligation occur? Well, um, if we think that the distance of an emergency uh, is relevant to deny this moral obligation, uh, what motivation other from guilt uh, is responsible for our actions in the first example? So, if we see the child who is about to, to drown, and if we don't do anything, we will feel very guilty. But if there are emergencies somewhere around the globe and we are not there and we don't see them, if we don't react, we will not feel guilty, okay? So, is the obligation to save a life, does that only result uh, because we would otherwise feel guilty? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so because I think um, altruism, caring for others, caring for others' well-being, is more than just reducing our own feelings of guilt. And, um, and um, this here, uh, that's relevant, relevant uh, in order to explain to you the concept of ethical career choice. Because this concept is based on those, on this thought experiment, because if you want to pursue an ethical career choice, it has to do something with altruism. You want to do this because you care for others. And so um, if you want to pursue an ethical career, it's important to tell yourself it's uh, 
that you also care for others who are not in front of your eyes, right? And uh, there is good news for people who want to be altruistic. Uh, studies have found that altruistic people, either volunteering or donating, they generally feel happier um, and healthier. And also, it has been found that an important factor for job satisfaction is how much our works benefits the well of others, the well-being of others. So um, now I would like to look at some um, possible career paths with you that all have to do with altruistic motivation. So the usual career advice you get is follow your passion. You might have a passion, you might study medicine, and you might want to become a doctor in the developing world and help people directly. And if you do that, if you follow through that passion, you will save um, a certain number of lives throughout your life. But is this really good advice? What if you don't have a passion yet? And what is if someone in the future, your priorities will change? Or what is if your career path that you're uh, pursuing now is taking you in a more, um, how shall I say, uh, money-making direction? What if your career path currently is taking you um, if you will end up to be a, a, maybe a banker or a lawyer or something like that. Um, there is another advice that's very common. It's do what you're good at. So why is it, this not a good advice? Um, eventually, after thousands of hours of education, of studying, of internships, of practicing, you will be good at what you do, hopefully, if you put some effort. So this will happen anyway, no matter what you're following. Maybe you're really not good at math, then you should not go and study it, but you know what I mean? So the best career advice is do something valuable. So what is doing something valuable? In order to do something valuable, you should go for something that wouldn't have happened anyway. Because like that, you add value to this world. So, if we go back to the lady who wanted to become a doctor in the development world, if she doesn't take the job, there will be someone else who wants to take that job because there's a lot of competition. Everyone wants to have this fulfilling career and to do a direct impact work. So if she doesn't take it, there will be someone else taking it and probably not to do very much worse than she would have done. But what if she's offered a career um, in a very lucrative uh, private uh, hospital where she will earn uh, the triple or uh, five times of what she would have earned as a development aid doctor, well, she will uh, sacrifice all those jobs you see here because if she takes that money-making job, she can fund all those people doing direct impact work in the uh, developing world. So, in her function as a, a funder, as a money-maker, she is irreplaceable because if she does not take the job, someone else will take the job in the, clin in the private clinic and this person might not donate that money, okay? So 
because a lot of people haven't yet heard about this concept of money making and giving it to charity. So it's very likely that all those jobs uh, might not be funded if she turns down that offer. Um, also, if people start pursuing careers of money making, they are more flexible um, than people working that are directly involved in the charity. Why is that? So imagine you have a cause and you dedicate yourself to that cause. Let me say you want to eliminate world poverty. Well, the UN plans to eliminate world poverty until 2030. So what will you do after 2030? You need uh, another job. You need to change uh, the, the field of your work. And this is somewhat harder to do than just uh, log in in your online uh, e-banking account and just change um, the receiver of your money that you're donating. So you're more flexible, you can switch causes, you can also switch organizations if you realize that some organization you're donating your money at is not does not uh, as valuable work as maybe a new charity. Um, it's also, um, this whole idea is combined with a lot of insecurity. You can never be sure that uh, the cause you're following is really the right cause for you. Maybe you have a priority shift. Uh, maybe there will be a new ethical arguments, new ethical concepts uh, that will make you rethink your choice. And then again, it's harder for the direct involved to change the job than for you who just gives the money. So if you are pursuing the career as a money maker, you will end up probably you will end up saving that amount of lives. Uh, I would like to say that in the words of uh, 80,000 hours found founder William McAskill, in general, the charitable sector is people rich, but money poor. So there are more people needed that fund those job in the charities. And the solution to that means earning to give and to become a money maker. As one example, I can show you Bill and Melinda Gates in their, uh, thanks to their foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, there have been $28 billion directed to making cheap vaccination for children available. And like that, it is estimated that they saved about six million lives. Now that's a lot. But also, it's very important to where you will direct that money. So there are charities who are a thousand times more effective than other charities. You could pay money uh, to educate a dog that will help a blind person. This is very expensive, it takes a lot of time. Or you can direct that money um, to a charity that prevents people from, uh, from becoming blind. And like that, you will um, contribute a lot more to the well-being of a lot, uh, many more people. And uh, of course, this information is available already. There are charity evaluators such as Givel, GiveWell, who provide very useful information about the most effective charities. Um, they have evaluated uh, a lot of charities and they recommend only, that's a lot, they recommend only that many. Um, and uh, yeah, that's really 
you should check it out if you don't know it already. And also there are websites, for example, Giving What We Can, where a lot of people make a pledge. They say, uh, I would like to donate 10% of my income or 5% of my income uh, until I retire or until I die. And if you do that, um, this has some advantages because you will not think about um, the fact that, oh, if I wouldn't have bought this coffee right now, I could have donated that money and saved this and that many lives. No, it will be easier for you because you say, I will direct 10% of my income to some very effective charity. And this already does a lot of good. And like that, you can basically do whatever you like with the rest of your salary and you will not feel guilty or anything if you spend it on something that's maybe not that useful. So, um, but now some of you might ask, what if the job is harming others? What if the money-making career I pursue has very bad consequences for other people's lives? Well, let me say, uh, it's all about the balance sheet. So, even if you're individual, balance sheet is negative. Even if the money you give to charity, thanks to that very high paid job that has bad consequences, even if that money does not save as many lives as the job basically destroys, you still have in the overall outcome. Uh, it's, it's still a positive result because if you don't take the job, then someone else will take it. The harm will happen anyway. It really will. So, but this person might not donate to charity. So if you don't take the job, the balance sheet will get negative. So, for example, if, um, if you look at the banker, uh, his uh, lifelong donations to a charity could actually save thousands of lives, even if his uh, trading activity is harming a lot of people. But what if this activity is demotivating? Well, um, if you don't want to, if you don't feel good taking such a job, even though you know about the good consequences coming from it, there are a lot of other careers who don't have that many bad consequences or not bad consequences at all. And with what you earn, you can still do a lot of good. For example, if you look at a high school teacher in Switzerland, he earns, um, on average, about a salary of 100,000 Swiss francs per year. So if you donate 10% of your income, uh, you can direct 10,000 francs annually to charity, which already pays for a part-time job. Uh, more uh, general advice, um, get to in touch with other people that pursue earning to give, that, that do work as money makers and that do have the same idea as you, that do want to do good, that do give money to charity, have meetups, uh, talk about what concerns you. Like this you can motivate each other. Um, also very important. Talk about what you do, okay? Some, I know the Swiss people, uh, they are very humble. They don't wanna talk about that they do something good, that they give to charity. Um, but actually, if you talk about it, well, you don't have to brag, you don't have to go around and say, oh, you know, today I saved 100 lives with my donation, I'm so good, uh, now I'm going home. So, no, but if you talk to people about this idea, um, if you get them interested, uh, great things might happen. You might not be alone anymore in your office. 
or like that's what I did with my friends. I told them about that, but yeah, not much. I hope I didn't get on their nerves. But anyway, um, in um, they didn't give me a birthday present in the end, but they collected money among them. They gave it to me and they told me, you know what, we know that you like this idea, so you can take the money and give it to charity. So if I would not have talked about it, then I wouldn't have donated 250 francs to charity. Um, so actually it's a good thing. And uh, last motivating advice is focus on being happy, because if you are happy, you will do better work. But um, can we make an even bigger difference? Well, yes, we could, if we go into research and if we focus on uh, the most important uh, areas and questions to be answered. Uh, we can go into medicine research, uh, we can work at, uh, on uh, malaria, we can go to development aids economics, we can go into ethics and develop new ethical concepts that will contribute to the well-being of others. We can go into sustainability research. We all know that we need more sources of renewable energies. We can go into meat substitute research because if we have a really good substitute based on plants, there will be less animals that suffer in factory farming. Uh, we can make research about how to enhance global governance and global cooperation. We can work on existential risks like artificial intelligence and nanotechnology, new emerging technologies that might be very dangerous. And a small example, if uh, we go into the development of crops, of new crops, that are very robust to, um, to uh, heavy uh, weather changes or that are enriched with nutrients, we can actually save millions of lives. But could we make an even bigger difference? We could if we go into activism, if we go into politics, teaching, journalism, those are all jobs where we will reach out on a lot of people, where we can spread our ideas. But of course, uh, in those jobs, uh, there are certain talents that one needs to have, like public speaking, uh, like uh, creativity uh, with uh, campaigns, or someone has to be, uh, has to have a very pedagogical talent to deal with children and young adults. And uh, those people, the influencers, are actually uh, very hardly replaceable. But uh, does that mean we all have to run now and become influencers? No, probably not, because a moneymaker can fund those influencers. So it's not clear whether it's better to become an influencer or a moneymaker. So, uh, more generally on how can we get there, uh, first, uh, with a little quote from Bill Gates, the hybrid engine of self-interest and concern for others can serve a much wider circle of people that can be reached by self-interest or caring alone. What do I mean by that? Um, if you only care, then maybe you want to get involved in more direct activities and you might not do as much um, uh, money making as you could or uh, you will worry every minute if I don't work, why didn't I work this hour, why was I not effective, now maybe I cost, I'm responsible for other people dying and stuff like that. This might just be very demotivating. So, as I said before, it's very important to focus on being happy too, on having free time and enjoying this. Uh, 
Um, if we want to look at uh, individual careers in more depth, uh, there are uh, useful. There is a useful um, tool. It's called the career value, and it's composed of uh, the career capital and the path impact potential. So if you look at the career, you can think about what immediate impact can this career have. So uh, some options uh, give us more influence than others and some let us work on more pressing problems than others. That's direct impact, um, immediate impact. And career capital is about future impact, okay? You can take a job now that will not have direct consequences or you will not earn a lot of money because it's a very low paid internship, but you will learn very valuable skills, you can make very valuable connections and you can get very good credentials that will help you get a more profitable job in the future. So that's the two aspects you can look at when uh, you look at a career objectively. Of course, then you have to look at your skills. Are you suited for this or not? And more general advices. Uh, it's good to get transferable skills, skills that you can use in one job or another. For example, getting good at languages, at writing, uh, creative writing, at speaking, at selling, negotiating, um, and abstract thinking, uh, visiting statistics courses, learning how to program. It's getting more and more important in almost every job domain. And doing something impressive is really good. For example, if you have an idea for a startup, uh, you should try to pursue it. Why should you try it? Because even if you fail, um, this will make you look uh, very interesting in later job applications and you might have bigger chances to get invited to a job interview. And uh, what's also very good is become the best at doing something. Uh, if you become the best magician in this world, you will probably earn a lot, a lot of money which gives you a very huge impact potential. So, uh, I would like to close with those words from Peter Singer. Uh, an ethical approach to life does not forbid having fun or enjoying food and wine, but it changes our sense of priorities. I hope now uh, you got an idea to those for that was new what it is, what it means to make a difference. I thank you a lot for your attention and I would like you to answer the second um, questionnaire now. Thank you very much.